Hi students. In class we've been talking a lot about post-colonial theory and the reason we've been thinking about post-colonial theory in this course is because it gives us an intellectual framework to think about the relationships that develop between oppressors and the oppressed. And post-colonial theory can be used to describe uh, the various complications, frustrations, and, um, and all sorts of social interactions that can take place between people who have power and the people they have power over. And one of the things that post-colonial theory asks us to consider is the fact that if you are um, dominating someone or if you have control of someone else, um, then you are going to perceive them in ways uh, that are slightly skewed, if not really skewed, um, and which give you kind of a false impression of who these people are and what it is they may want. It also asks us to think about the fact that if you yourself are oppressed in some way uh, or have someone kind of lording over you in one way or another, your perceptions of that person are also going to be um, inaccurate or complicated complicated by your relationship with them. Now those are fairly complex ideas, but we have two really good terms that we can use uh, as we bring this concept to bear on specific literary documents, and those terms are first, um, other, or othering. Uh, and we talked about how post-colonial theory asks us to consider the other, and what the other is, is that person or group that is either oppressing you or which you are oppressing. It's the group that you are not a part of, but which has some major major control or impact on your life. And we might think of who these others might be um, as we've seen them in literature so far this semester. For example, in Robinson Crusoe, we have the others of the cannibals, the various tribes uh, that Caruso uh, sees around his island. And as he thinks about these tribes and describes them and, and, and articulates who they are to us, one of the things we might notice is that his perception of what's going on with these groups is generally um, uh, suspect, uh, is one thing we might say. Uh, and then we might also think about how other people view Caruso. For example, when he rescues uh, rescues the sailors later in the text, and he suddenly becomes their new um, their new um, king, as it were. Um, the way in which they perceive him and the way in which they talk about him uh, makes us understand that they see him in ways that maybe we don't or we haven't so far in this text. But the classic example of othering, of course, this semester is Frankenstein and Frankenstein's perception of the monster and the monster's perceptions of Frankenstein and what we find out by the end of that book is that even though they've been caught up in this epic struggle with one another for, for a long period of time, they have very uh, skewed views of one another based on their limited understanding and knowledge of one another. That's post-colonial theory, or that's a way in which post-colonial theory can be applied to a couple of texts to help us understand them in different ways. Also, we have the concept of the hybrid which is very useful in Jane Eyre. Uh, and the hybrid is the individual or individuals who kind of straddle social classes or they straddle uh, social expectations. They're never one kind of person or one kind of, t of type or the other. In Jane Eyre we have this character who seems to be able to move in and out of various social roles and social classes. And as we wonder about how these movements take place and how these various uh, or how this identity might affect Jane Eyre's life, we can gain a better insight in understanding into her concerns, into her struggles, into why it is she makes the decisions that she makes. For example, many of you have noticed how resolute and almost stoic Jane Eyre is from time to time, especially when you expect her to explode or become very upset or frustrated. Um, and what we see is that she tends not to react as we think she will react. Well, why is that? Well, one way to think about that is because uh, part of her personality uh, is, is to be someone who can navigate these various social roles and expectations and classes um, um, while maintaining her own identity. So post-colonial theory is a, is a new concept. The concepts of other or othering and hybrid, I'm sure, are new concepts as well to you. But we can bring them to literary texts. We can look for how they emerge in literary texts. And as we, as we come to understand these subjects, we can write about and think about books in different ways, which may help clarify your thinking or concerns uh, on a particular novel, which could be very helpful for the papers that you will be writing. So as was the case with the other theories I've examined, that's a very, very, very general explanation and introduction to the concept, but hopefully it's enough to get you interested, to get you thinking, and to get you writing, because that's what I'll be looking for. So until next time, I guess I'll see you in class.